racing for the front line, pistol on his belt, the soldier prince sprinting into harm's way. This is Harry's War, unprecedented access to a royal in combat, to a killer who could be king. We fire when we have to, take a life to save a life. But you are the man with the trigger in your hand and if called upon, you will fire and presumably you have and you will kill the enemy. Yeah, so lots of people have. Um, you know, the squadron's been out here, we've, 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 everyone's fired a certain amount, um, probably a little bit more than this time last year to a certain extent, um, but that's just the way that it's balanced out. Prince Harry's tour meant media as well as military obligations, but when the call to arms came, there was no contest. It wasn't done in the wrong way, but it was just... The role of the Apache crew is a varied one. The attack helicopters are both Guardian Angel and Airborne Enforcer. And when you're on the very high readiness shift, it means sleeping fully clothed and good to go whenever the call comes. Get to the aircraft as quick as possible. Uh, about six and a half, seven minutes, I think, is the, is the quickest we've got it going. Um, you, can't, you can't lift off until certain things are done in the aircraft. Um, and then as soon as you've got clearance from, um, from the ops room, straight up and off you go. It could be anything from uh, a medevac uh, through to uh, troops in contact, through to a priority, which is um, guys being seen with a weapon system, probably moving into a fire position to cause harm. So um, anything, anything like that, or just to um, cover overwatch for a patrol that's out on the ground. The pilot Prince didn't actually fly the helicopter in Afghanistan, but he was in the front seat, the business end of what's effectively a flying arsenal. We've got the, um, the, the comms panel up here so we know exactly what's going on. Two pair screens, uh, TDAC, um, which is here, which is basically my targeting system, and then the trigger grips here, which is basically, well, designed for the younger generation, let's put it that way. Um, every button's got a different texture on it, so that in, for some reason the buttons aren't lit. Um, there must have been a reason for that but instead they're all different textures, so at night you should be able to tell what button you're pressing. There's, there are still times when obviously you press the wrong button, but you, you know pretty soon, not soon after, that you've uh, pressed the wrong one. Harry may be encased in a £45 million armour-plated flying gun, but if the worst does happen, he needs to be able to defend himself, though his primary role is the safety of others. The main thing for us is the tricky escorts, if guys get injured, uh, we come straight into the overhead, puts off any, any possibility of an insurgent attack because they look at us and just go, right, that's an unfair fight, we're not going to go near them. But, you know, occasionally we get taken on, the guys get taken on, even when we're in the overhead. The Apache is state-of-the-art, both in weaponry and defensive capability. And being inside one is about as safe as you can get in Afghanistan, which is why, of course, the Royal Air was allowed to go back to Helmand again. But Harry had only been at Camp Bastion a week when that safety was threatened by an audacious Taliban attack on the base itself, in which two US Marines were killed. This camp is in the middle of Afghanistan and, you know, it should be expected to be attacked at any point. Um, and the guys dealt with it really well. Um, and it was on my birthday, so it was a bit of a, a reality check. Prince Harry was about a mile away when the insurgents broke in, but it dramatically underlined the dangers of serving in Afghanistan in any capacity. Though if HRH had his way, he wouldn't be flying an Apache at all. If this is the only way that I can do it, and by getting back out to Afghanistan, then so be it. Um, my choice would have been back out on the ground with my regiment. Um, it sounds quite a sport when I'm standing in front of this thing, £45 million pounds worth. But um, yeah, I think hopefully you know, my friends and family back home know exactly what I'm talking about. The Prince might not have chosen this route back to Afghanistan, but clearly he loved it. I was... Uh... 80 clicks due west of here um, at, a, at an American base for an Afghan soldier. We don't really know much more details of that, whether he was shot or, or whatever, but uh, yeah, it's another part of the country that we've never been to. Um, hopefully he'll be all right. But for now, it's game over. And for Harry and the rest of 662 Squadron, it's time to go home. After that... I'll always be here for my grandmother and who... And Whoever needs to send me send me a ball for whatever reason, um, you know I I don't really have any plans. Um, 
this was my main my main effort to get back back out to Afghanistan. It took a little bit longer because of uh, <laughs> certain reasons, but um, yeah, I'm I'm out here now, so that part of me is uh, that's another tick in the box. Um, as to how long I'm going to spend in the army, who knows? Um, you know, I, I will continue to bounce between my army job and the other job. More immediately for Prince Harry and his crewmates, it's time to wind down in Cyprus before a few weeks leave and then back to his unit. Will he go back to Afghanistan? Almost certainly not. Captain Wales's war has run its course. David Bowden, Sky News.